Welcome to our webinar today, where we will explore how purchasing decisions are shifting in the environmental health and safety software market. Microsoft and iTrack365 commissioned industry research firm Verdantix to survey 50 C-level executives on the impact that business platforms have on their choice for EHS software. Today, I'm joined with lead EHS researcher, Bill Pennington, and Asim Riaz, who is responsible for the Microsoft ISV program in Canada. To start, I'll hand it over to Bill Pennington um, from Verdantix to walk us through the survey findings, and then also have a short round table to discuss these results. So over to you, Bill. Great, thanks, Trevor. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here today um, to, to share some of the results that we had on this survey. Really a lot of interesting results uh, excited to talk about them, uh, about the business application um, market, as well as the EHS software market, and, and really what this means for all the EHS professionals who will be tuning in today. Uh, so as Trevor has mentioned, um, you know, uh, iTrack uh, reached out to Verdantix to, to run this uh, survey. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Verdantix, uh, we are an independent uh, research and advisory firm. We really look at digital strategies and digital expertise in a variety of different areas um, to, to support organizations' uh, strategies, their growth strategies, help them invest wisely, and ultimately optimize their performance. As Trevor had mentioned, um, I am a part of the EHS team. So I am the research director for our EHS research practice. Um, I came from a, a background in the EHS corporate world. So I was an EHS manager and compliance auditor for, for several years before coming to Verdantix. And uh, at Verdantix, I help lead and direct our research in the EHS technology marketplace. Um, you know, as you can see, some of the key themes we've been looking at here are around areas like digital EHS, um, hierarchy of controls, all the different technology we look at, as well as really helping pro uh, improve EHS performance um, and ultimately try to help reduce serious injuries, fatalities, ensure compliance. So that, that's ultimately our goal here at Verdantix. And um, you know, this was a really interesting survey for us to work on because uh, it shed a lot of insights into a lot of purchasing criteria um, and, and aligns with a lot of the different trends that we're seeing in the market, which I'll, I'll continue to talk about later. So just very quickly, as, as Trevor had mentioned, just very quickly give a very short background of what this uh, survey looked like. We want to make sure that everyone's always aware of you know, what the, the, the N or number of uh, respondents we have looks like, what the breakdown are, so they can align with kind of your organization. But for this uh, survey, we looked at 50 corporate decision makers, those who really had that um, authority to make uh, application purchasing decisions. We looked between the US and Canada. Um, we also looked in a medium and high risk uh, industries. You can see we've broken down those industries in the bottom right there. Uh, we looked in these mid-market firms as well as we looked at some enterprise firms. Um, and then we also didn't just look specifically at one function. We looked across an organization since those uh, individuals might have different criterias or for purchasing decisions. Um, and so we looked in operations, IT, as well as in the health and safety space. And the first part of, of this presentation and you know, one of the key topics of the survey was around these business application platforms, those platforms that you're probably familiar with, um, you know, that your organization uses uh, you know, fairly widespread, um, uh, you know, looking at things that are in the ERP space, the human capital management, um, engagement, collaboration tools. Uh, we wanted to gauge the um, you know, uh, um, adoption rate of these types of solutions um, and the demand for these types of solutions with amongst these 50 respondents. So the first question we asked was, you know, straightforward, what kind of business applications do your firm use uh, and, and to what extent do you use those within your operations? So what we did see was that organizations are increasingly looking towards these applications to really help meet some of their operational demands. And if you look at this figure here, you know we're going to have a lot of figures throughout this. So I'll just try to highlight the key aspects of it. You know, I think what probably jumps out at you most is uh, Microsoft definitely led the way. Um, there was no respondents who um, weren't using it at all. Um, uh, and 96% uh, of the respondents were using it at least across multiple business units or the organization. So definitely um, quite uh, you know, pervasive technology 
firms are actively looking to leverage Microsoft. You know, we'll hold the term that some of these organizations are like a Microsoft company. So, you know, they they look towards Microsoft and they use Microsoft in a lot of their different operations. And when we were looking at business applications, we wanted to know, you know, what really made that decision for actually purchasing a business application. Uh, and we saw a couple, couple of different reasons why a firm would choose one business application over another business application. Um, and some of the key areas were around things like the consistent UI um, across different modules and application. Very key to driving engagement, very key to driving user adopters. Having this consistent UI just makes workflows easier. We also saw that integration, you know, this is another theme that I think you're going to be hearing a lot of today. Integration and connection of data across modules application, applications is essential. Um, and then also things like the ability to customize and configure your solution to better meet your uh, organizational needs, which goes, I think, aligned with the functional fit. So as I mentioned, some firms, you know, uh, Microsoft just fits a little bit better with the functional needs of the organization, as well as, you know, these other criteria around, you know, it's a customizable, configurable solution, helps integrate data, and, and the UI is either consistent and the experience might just be more familiar um, for their workers as well. <clears throat> so we're talking about business applications, and you know, uh, I think you're if you're familiar with iTrack, you know, iTrack is focused in the area of environmental health and safety. So we wanted to really understand um, also the EHS priorities of these 50 respondents. So one of the things that in Verdantix we've been seeing a lot of is that uh, EHS functions are really facing increased pressure for just better data insights. And the reason being is that the EHS function's responsibilities just continue to grow. Um, this data here is from our latest, uh, our last global survey. We'll have another one coming out in about a month and a half. This one was of 301 uh, EHS decision makers around the world. Um, and it was, it was very interesting to see. So, you know, being a EHS professional in, in my past life, um, and if we think about 10 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago in the EHS function, it was, it was very much, um, maybe in that health and safety piece. And then eventually the E was added on, it became EHS. Uh, and then eventually, you know, more focus on maybe contractors fell under the EHS, uh, umbrella. So, uh, you know, things continuously kept pi getting piling on. It was almost like EHS was the manager of everything to a degree. Um, and we are seeing that responsibilities continue to grow. Um, so this is a really interesting and important kind of aspect when we look at EHS is um, you're going to have to wear a lot of different hats. Uh, we've seen higher priority for things like environmental compliance driven very heavily through ESG. So ESG is a hot topic. Uh, a lot of the respondents are going are getting a lot more pressure to improve their data collection capabilities for ESG related metrics. Uh, you know, COVID happened, so there was COVID management in the past. There's still the better management of, or you know, expected management of COVID and and, and further illnesses. Um, you've also EHS professionals are being kind of um, given the priority to improve their uh, worker mental health and well-being, which is another um, uh, kind of process, you know, area that came out of COVID-19. How to support your workforce how to kind of curb that great resignation, how to increase your overall worker well-being and happiness. Um, and then some other areas like increasing frontline worker engagement, like we've discussed, um, contractor, product compliance. So there's a lot of different responsibilities. <clears throat> and to be able to actually do a lot of these responsibilities, you know, there's only so much time in the day and there's, uh, there's only so much bandwidth one EHS manager or EHS function can have is they need solutions, they need technology to support them. Uh, so for this question, we ask, you know, what types of solutions does your firm use to manage your health and safety and risk compliance? Um, and we can see that there's a mix of solutions that the managers and organizations are relying on for EHS processes. Excel forms, databases, I think everyone's familiar with those. Um, almost all of the respondents use those to some degree. Uh, we also see a lot of commercial software point solutions. It's a lot of these point solutions for very specific processes. Um, <clears throat> we're also seeing, uh, again, we talked about enterprise applications. So there are, uh, 
firms that are using their enterprise business applications to help support their EHS processes. Pen and paper, you know, that's what we're trying to move away from. We're slowly getting there. Still a lot of pen and paper out there, um, as well as, you know, integrations into collaboration tools and, and some internally built software. So again, a mix of solutions. And going a little bit further into that, really to validate that, and, and this is data from a survey that is going to be coming out for Verdantix, so I'd say about a month and a half. I, I highly uh, recommend that when this does come out, you, you check out our website, research.verdantix.com, because um, it'll be a big, uh, expansive um, survey. Uh, look to have another 300 respondents. But for this uh, preliminary data, we've, we have 160 respondents. And we asked, you know, how many types of solutions are you using for your EHS? And it's it's probably going to hit home with you. It's probably going to resonate with you. Not very shocking, but still, you know, it's not uh, the most efficient way that we see uh, managing EHS. But over uh, 50% or 50% of the respondents um, are using two to five. Um, and then even, you know, about 44% are using over six different point solutions um, or, or different types of solutions. Again, those, those Excel, those pen and papers, those um, internally built uh, to manage the process. So there's a lot, there's a lot of different um, point solutions being used um, and it's, it leads to the potential inefficiencies, the potential data styling we'll talk about, um, but it's just, it's something that exists. It's the uh, hard truth of the, the matter and um, there, there, there's, there's a better way or there, there can be a better way. So we'll talk about, a bit about that as well. Um, and, and just to go a little bit further into it, you know, we talked about Excel being 90, I think it was 94% of the respondents are using Excel. Um, so when we also ask the respondents, to what extent do you feel like your EHS software, if you're using enterprise or commercial systems, are actually leveraging that data that resides within your spreadsheets or any office-based applications. Um, you know, how well do you think that's leveraged? Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately only about 28% felt like it was highly leveraged, which means the majority of them felt like that data was not leveraged or it was somewhat leveraged. Uh, and I think what we know is, is not being able to fully access that valuable data that sits inside of Excel sheets or in any Excel based forms, um, you, you lose a lot of value. You know, you, you, EHS relies pretty heavily on having good data and good insights into the reality of your situation, not just for compliance, but to help you better identify risk and manage risk. Um, and if you lose that by having it being stuck in Excel files or not being leveraged to its full extent, I mean, you just ultimately lose a lot of value. Um, so, so we're hoping to find ways to, to fix that type of uh, situation for organizations. <clears throat> and, you know, I think this is another interesting piece, too, is we looked at all the different types of solutions. The trend that we see now that we're going to increasingly see is, you know, firms are looking towards EHS software solutions to help manage all of their different workflows. I'm not going to go through each of these, just wanted to highlight that, you know, there's expectations over the next 12 to 24 months that firms are going to increasingly be adopting EHS software. Uh, they might already be using EHS software for one of these or maybe two of these different processes. And again, they might be using some sort of point solution for three or four of them. You know, is there a way that we are able to integrate this into all into a single platform and just ultimately make a, uh, you know, an easier, more consistent flow of data um, to, to help drive EHS decisions? And we do see, you know, there is a big demand for actually adopting these types of solutions, um, but that there are, uh, you know, different criteria similar to, um, to uh, you know, when we talked about looking for enterprise applications, you know, there's always going to be criteria or there's always going to be potential barriers that, um, uh, that pro prohibit firms from being able to really find a solution that fits best for them. Um, so we asked, uh, you know, what are the key criteria for selecting EHS um, and risk compliance management software for the um, 50 respondents of the survey? And pretty, pretty similar to the enterprise one, uh, enterprise business application question. Uh, configurability is a big one. 
over 50% of or 50% of the respondents felt like configurability workflows and forms is very important. We all know that everyone's organizations or even business units within organizations might have very specific needs. Um, also integrations into existing uh, enterprise application platforms is definitely a interest, or is an important or very important aspect uh, that the respondents um, uh, have mentioned. Consistent UI across uh, different modules and applications again, uh, and similarly consistent application architecture across the solution. So fairly similar to that initial question, when you're looking at a, an enterprise platform, um, an enterprise business application platform, those type of criteria align very well with the types of criteria you would like to see when you're selecting um, a health and safety uh, um, solution as well. And then mentioned too, there are some barriers. So, you know, there is a lot of demand for these solutions. Um, there's a lot of demand for health and safety technology to support your organization. Um, but there are barriers to uh, adoption of solutions. And ultimately, when you adopt the solution, there are barriers to full success of those types of um, solutions for your EHS programs. So this question was around the significant barriers, um, you know, the, the significant, um, how significant some of the barriers were for user adoption in EHS programs. And um, one of the top ones right here was just technology vendor limits. So, you know, we'll, we'll see this a lot with some of the point solutions is that uh, it's just not enough to really uh, fulfill all of the requirements that your organization needs, especially across different processes. Uh, disjointed UI and uh, UX. I think we know that this is a killer towards towards adoption. Um, again, user participation very tied into this this UI and this uh, UX. So you know if you if you make the job any bit harder for your workers than it needs to be, they're going to gravitate away from that you know path of most resistance to the path of least resistance, which is just not using that solution because it makes their job, you know, having a couple different steps added to it. Um, so really uh, uh, leading towards this lower user participation, as well as uh, kind of aligned with the fact that there's all these different point solutions being used um, in application overload. So, you know, having to sign into four different things to do the tasks through your day is just um, kind of a, a killer of, of, of workflow and, um, you know, it's 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 not uh, something that frontline workers want to have to deal with. So these have been some of the barriers that um, you know in the existing EHS software landscape organizations have run into. <clears throat> so we've talked a bit about business applications, um, and we've talked a bit about the EHS uh, landscape right now. And what does this all come together to to kind of show? Um, what we have seen from this survey and what we've also seen from a lot of our own Verdantics research is consolidation of these types of solutions uh, is essential for EHS excellence. And what we're seeing here is that EHS processes really can benefit by tapping into the power of business application platforms. So to really highlight that, you know, we asked the respondents if they could rank from highest to lowest their perceived benefits of integrating EHS software solutions with their enterprise business application. So we saw before that, you know, a criteria, a major criteria for selecting the solutions would be that they can integrate in with business enterprise business applications. Um, and if they are integrating in, you know, these are the types of benefits that firms are expecting. You know, number one, again, really the key theme in this is improved visibility for data um, and include improved availability of that data. You know, we're only as good as the data that we have and uh, having the best data make allows you really to make the most informed decisions, allows you to make decisions where you save money, uh, where you're more productive, where you're able to ensure compliance, you're able to protect your workers. Uh, data is key and having these integrations of EHS and enterprise business applications really does uh, kind of enhance that process, uh, as well as this easier worker engagement. Again, another key topic, really needing to ensure that you're engaging your workers, um, that you're, you're allowing them have the best opportunity to use these types of solutions um, and increase user adoption, ultimately leads to more productivity boosts, as you see there, um, and then standardization of data across processes and function as well. So not just having data sit within the EHS or within operations or within quality, 
you know, giving yourself an opportunity to allow that data to be standardized. Again, that, that enables better access to data, but also enables better end tools. So things like BI um, tools or potential advanced analytics types tools to um, really get the value and leverage that data for, for, you know, more advanced insights, um, you know, p- potentially more predictive in the future type insights. And then, uh, you know, similarly, when we integrate in uh, EHS software processes, um, you know, we asked, you know, what would be the most valuable types of ap- applications to be able to integrate in your EHS into? Um, and there's a lot of different, you know, um, levels of value that the respondents uh, felt like if you could integrate EHS and with these, they would be very valuable. Um, you know, the top three here that we saw, ESG, again, a very hot topic at the moment. Um, human capital management systems, training management, somewhat similar. Um, you know, also things like your enterprise asset management systems. So being able to integrate in um, your uh, EHS data and your EHS uh, solutions and systems in with these types of enterprise applications definitely would have, uh, you know, a very high level of value for organizations. And then finally here for the, for the survey data, um, you know, collaboration tools, uh, really we wanted to see, you know, we talked about engagement, we talked about safety culture, you know, safety culture is a hot topic. Um, everyone's looking at how to increase their safety culture. When I was a uh, EHS manager, my biggest thing was really trying to build that safety culture. It makes your job a lot easier if everyone is working safer and it's top of mind for them. So we asked how significant, you know, the impact on their EHS function, you know, to build safety culture, to build engagement would be if their EHS software was able to integrate uh, with collaboration tools that we listed. And you can see here that uh, Microsoft Office Teams um, would be very significant for 40%, 38% but said significant. Um, you know, a lot of organizations using Teams now or using 365 in some way. Uh, being able to integrate in your EHS processes and workflows into that space uh, just gives a lot of opportunity to help build engagement, really build safety culture ultimately throughout your organization and throughout your EHS function. <clears throat> And we've talked about all the different types of data integrations, you know, being able to, to key in data from specific different areas, uh, integrate all of that in enterprise uh, business application space. Um, and, you know, with all of this data, one of the things we see at Verdantix is this kind of concept that, uh, you know, a lot of firms are aware of, but don't really know how to get to that point. And it's how can you manage risk more dynamically? So it's like, it's it's going from, a lot more, uh, um, a lot more uh, kind of lagging indicators and reactive type EHS management, moving towards a, a lot more of a predictive management, uh, you know, risk management, dynamic risk management, a lot of leading indicators. Um, and the way you do that is with just more data, you know, ultimately increasing data sources, integrating data sources onto a single platform being able to increase engagements to allow for more data to be inputted correctly. Um, you know, your health and safety data, maybe your asset data, maybe some of your RRM data, all of this combines to give you the real snapshot of risk within your organization um, and really just allows you to manage that risk holistically and, and dynamically and, and with the end goal of a better EHS program and a, uh, you know, safer workers and, and better compliance. And that, that kind of comes to my end here. Um, just last note real quick, EHS excellence really is going to be achieved through data-driven, data-driven insights. And, uh, you know, that's the next frontier of EHS. Um, and I'm excited to see what that looks like uh, over the next few years. Excellent, Bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. And, uh, you know, the insights that we see, uh, one, of the, one of the things I took from what you said was, um, and I'll quote you, is consolidation for EHS excellence. Um, to me, that was a, a really um, key term because, you know, certainly as we see these business platforms, it's really hard to find a platform that will do it all. Um, but you need with these these large vendors in the marketplace, and certainly it's a strong belief of ours and part of the reason why we wanted to prove this out with the data that we did, that you need the large vendors, but you also need the niche solutions to really make the uh, uh, the whole picture come together. Industry plus platform, 
and uh, then you're going to be able to give an organization all the breadth and depth that they need. So let's let's uh, turn this a little bit more interactive and, and talk a little bit about the data. So first, um, I might go to you, um, uh, Asim, and and ask you. You know, I don't think it comes to anyone's surprise that Microsoft is you know the top in terms of platform. We understand. You know, every one of us use. Uh, the Microsoft suite uh, every day is part of what we call our everyday workflows. But uh, Microsoft's up to more. They're up to more with business applications. They're going deeper. Tell me a little bit about what's happening for Microsoft's larger strategy when it comes to business application platforms and, and even how that relates to industry niches like EHS and partners like iTrack 365. Um, so if you look at it, you know, um, generalistically speaking, right, Power Platform, it's an inclusive technology. Right. It allows you to work together and meet challenges effectively across the organization, which is one of the pain points that we just talked about, you know, that a lot of organizations have from their EHS systems today. Now, with Power Platform, you can analyze data, build solutions, automate processes and create, you know, virtual agents as such. Right. So all of these are really designed to address a lot of that collaborative challenges that the organizations have today. I mean, the applications of the Power Platform are literally limitless when you think about it. It is new, it is continuously evolving, and a lot of the organizations are, you know, really flocking towards it. They're developing, creating new applications. Mm -hmm. Employees are able to, you know, get onto the Power Platform, create new apps without, you know, having the need or knowledge of a lot of coding. So the idea, once again, is usability, simplicity as well. Now, integration, as we talked about across all different modules and applications, is critical for organizations. Now, companies are looking for that simple UI that can scale and leverage data from all disparate sources for a single source of truth. As we talked about, that's you know one of the pain points that Bill highlighted as well in the survey. Now, in addition to that, Organizations want access to detailed information about any given situation that may arise, but also they want to be able to respond and adapt effectively to those situations. And Power Platform, with all its capabilities, you know, allows us to do that in a very efficient and expeditious manner. And once again, you know, it neatly ties into what the organizations are expecting to see from NEHS solutions. Yeah, thanks. Uh... Uh, Asim, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, Bill, a little bit more questions about, um, you know, on some of your early slides, we saw the responsibility of the EHS function. You know, like you said, they're almost doing everything in the organization. But, you know, it's really highlighting the fact that you need data from everywhere. You need data from all these different organizations. And data, the kind of data, is changing as well. And I'm really interested to see that, you know, ESG is starting to surface in, you know, every conversation we're in and, and you're seeing it in your research as well, where you say 95% of companies see capturing ESG data as either medium or high priority as well. 65% of those saying high. Tell us a little bit more about the, you know, the, you know, the, this expanding role and, and specifically about this hot topic of ESG and, and how EHS professionals might play a role in it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Trevor. It's uh, it's definitely interesting. I mean, ESG is is the buzzword right now. Um, I think uh, it's uh, if we go back um, eight years or nine years, I think sustainability started kind of taking. You know, that that blew up for for a while. I remember when I was first entering into the space, sustainability was the big thing, um, and it kind of fell off a little bit. Um, now ESG is back. There's money behind it, and everyone's interested in ESG. Uh, the good thing is, um, you know, what we've seen is EHS software has primarily been doing a lot of the data collection for ESG processes um, for years now. Uh, and, and, the, and, and firms are starting to recognize that, okay, EHS actually is kind of the main uh, data collection, uh, you know, area or function with our organization for ESG. And, you know, the big area right now is environmental. Um, there's, there's things like the TCFD and, and uh, carbon neutrality type um, you know, regulations that are happening in the EU, as well as the potential SEC rules happening in, in North America. So everyone's very focused on environment, you know, leveraging some of your EHS data around whatever your GHG and air emissions have been, your carbon management has been, 
your scope one, two, and three um, emissions. You know, a lot of that has been done in the EHS space um, for, for years. So being able to um, pull in a lot of that environmental compliance data is going to be key for ESG initiatives. Um, but then also when we look a bit forward thinking, you know, right now we're really on that E. That E is the big, the big thing. That there's regulations behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, our expectations are that um, there's going to be um, some sort of standards and some sort of standardization of ESG over the next few years. Um, and when these standards come into place, there's that S aspect as well. So there's that social piece. Um, and a part of that social piece is how you, um, uh, you interact with the ex- external world, correct? But also how you interact with your internal world. So your, your DEI for your workers, m- ensuring you have a, 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 a you know, workplace that's healthy, that's safe, um, they focus on worker wellness. You know, that social piece is going to come in play eventually. Um, and again, you know, that's the, the, you know, that is the, the key area of EHS that we see now. Um, so I think expectations are, uh, you know, the data that we have now and the data that we're collecting that will be valuable in the future. Um, you know, we're C suites are starting to recognize that and, and really <clears throat> drive that responsibility towards EHS managers even more. Yeah, no rest for uh, EHS professionals. Um, there's <laughs> lots to do, and uh, you know, with an ever-growing role, it's uh, it's going to be significant and continue to be. So, uh, but it is really great to hear that that we're fulfilling a very you know specific need in these organizations, but in the larger community as well, right? People worry about are these companies responsible? Ultimately, these companies um, you know with these systems need to prove that, and the way you prove it is you prove it through data, just like we are today. So. Um, Really a uh, exciting trend that's developing there. So, Bill, let's go a little bit into another piece that I, I you talked about your new survey. Uh, really excited about that piece of work that's coming forward, and thank you for sharing that information. Um, and it was shocking to me, you know, um, even as one in this industry, 85% of companies had at least two systems, and over a third of them had six to ten different systems for managing EHS. That's a a complex thing. Tell me a little bit about that dynamic and, and, you know, you know, the challenge and maybe some of the solutions that might come from that. Yeah. And I think um, it's shocking to hear, but I think if we, if we, uh, you know, any of the professionals on the call, um, you know, on this webinar today, uh, I think if you, if you take a hard think about it, it'll it'll make a lot more sense because, you know, EHS is um, uh, there's a lot, it's a complex process. You know, there's, you know, as you said, all these responsibilities. So there's a lot of different workflows within EHS now. Um, and I could very, you know, commonly see even from my experience, you know, you might have a software to maybe a commercial point solution that you lean on for some of your big stuff. You know, your incident management is all within one or maybe your chemical management because you need to have SDS compliance um, or you have chemical inventories. Um, and then some of these other smaller processes um, you know, maybe your trainings or, you know, maybe just some of the, the pieces of those you have in Excel um, because it's just easier or your current technology vendor just doesn't have, you know, there's limitations that they, they, they just don't have that process digitized. So you still have to kind of go out and create your own things, um, a lot of legacy systems with an organization. So it's, it's, it's actually fairly um, not surprising to me at the end of the day, yeah. um, but uh, a mindset shift has has kind of occurred over the last uh, you know 18 months. Um, one, these processes need to be digitized better because in COVID we saw that you know without robust digital systems in place, there was a lot of operational uh, disruptions. IT teams are really pushing this. So what we expect to see is a lot of those point solutions being consolidated. You know, recognizing the players in the market now in the software space who offer more robust EHS solutions about multiple processes. We're expecting to see a lot more uh, digitization of those, I don't want to say dumb process, you know, dumb pen and paper, or maybe Excel, you know, basic Excel-based processes. We're going to see a lot of consolidation of some of these point solutions. Um, I think if we look at this um, same question in two years, my expectation would be, uh, you know, this will probably be cut in half uh, while firms start to recognize the types of solutions available in the marketplace that can, that can consolidate a lot of that into an integrated platform. Yeah, very interesting, uh, Bill. 
Let's let's take this back, Asim. Um, you know, there's a couple themes that seem to be you know surfacing, and and certainly we're we're really thrilled to have you know Microsoft as a key partner of iTrack 365. We're thrilled to have uh, um, you know the support to you know do this research because we really believe understanding the data is critical as a as a software vendor to to know where to take our vision for the product and the capabilities and and how to ultimately really satisfy those clients. Um, a few things that we heard, you know, that are keep showing up all the time are consistent UIs. Um, and the consistent UIs, I think, is, is you can kind of say it, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's about user adoption. It's about get people using these tools. It's easy to go back to paper. It's easy to go back to something else that's manual. Um, we've got to make it very easy for them to do it digitally if we're going to get the opportunity to capture that. And then also the, the second part of that is analytics being able to see the analytics that comes from the data, because if it is digitized, um, you've got the opportunity, um, you know, to actually look at this data and, 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 you know, eventually start to get to places that Bill, you talked about like predictive and predictive safety is a big area that we, we think a lot about and, and uh, uh, there are many opportunities with artificial intelligence and so on. But if you come back, um, Asim and comment about consistent UIs and data-driven analytics, maybe talk a little bit about how that fits within the, you know, the Microsoft suite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a couple of things here. I know as we're talking through this, um, first thing that keeps popping, you know, in my mind is, you know, Power BI, Power Platform, Power Platform, right? Uh, with all the different pain points we're, uh, you know, talking about the organizations have today with their EHS systems, the disparate data sources, you know, the single pane of glass, how do you make that data accessible and usable? Uh, and then give it to the, you know, uh, employees so they can collaborate real time, right? So if you think about really the goal here, is really to help users find, share, and create insights, right? And all I can think about is, you know, Power BI has that rich integration, right? It also integrates into Microsoft Teams, which enables teams and individuals to quickly get and use the data that they need without having the need to switch applications or screens. I mean, uh, iTrack is, you know, no stranger to this, right? You, iTrack has 40 plus out of the box reporting dashboards that include full integration within Teams. So so users don't have to navigate elsewhere, right? It's once again coming back to that point of access to unified information in the applications that the employees of any given organizations are using for collaboration. Now, together with these capabilities, right, we make it easier for individuals uh, and teams, you know, to collaborate when users learn to use these tools together, you know, in their daily, weekly, monthly rhythms and are using it to make informed decisions. You know, they are creating a data culture. Organizations can accelerate the growth and spread the, you know, this data culture by broadly deploying these Power BI and Microsoft Team technologies together. Well, once again, you know, uh, a lot of the core, if you think about it, is addressing that main pain points of having you know, information in so many disparate, you know, sources, not having a single pane of truth or a single pane of glass to look at, and then the usability of it. So Power Platform, along with Teams, really sort of helps address that. Yeah, we, we uh, fully agree, uh, um, it seemed that the Teams just provides so much capability. It's added a whole collaboration layer around our suite of software. And, and if you look at really what you're trying to do with the whole safety EHS initiative, back to all the, the things that Bill talked about earlier, it's about engaging mm -hmm. employees and bringing this top of mind, bringing this out, bringing data and insights, but also giving them tools to interact better to be mm -hmm. able to help them make their organizations manage risk uh, in a more effective way. So Teams has been a game changer. I think the other thing that I'd go even one step before, beyond that too, is the ability to configure and change. Um, workflows are constantly changing. Companies want to have independence to be able to do that. So if you can add collaboration around it, then you can add a configuration layer around it um, using things like Power Automate. All of that really, really starts to give the benefit of both industry depth of EHS, but also the, the you know, literally the power of a, of, a, of a massive organization like Microsoft. Yeah, I think you nailed it there, which is once you have the data, what do you do with the data, right? How do you adapt? Yeah. How do you respond to that quickly in a very expeditious manner? We're always thrilled when we hear from our customers that 
you know, the, the conversations that used to be there were, you know, walking into a boardroom fighting over whose Excel spreadsheet was right. And now those those conversations have not talked about which data source is right is it's more around, hey, itrax has got the data, um, Dataverse has the data. You know, we know that's a single source. What do we do about that data? And that that is a huge game changer because uh, organizations, you know, tend to get disparate sources. And that's a real problem. So in, in closing, maybe maybe I'd just ask, uh, give you guys a, a, a quick uh, a moment to add some closing commentary. But Bill, if you had to share, you know, some big takeaways for, you know, what's coming in 2022, 2023, uh, we're kind of um, hopefully on the seeing the backside of the pandemic and moving into a future uh, where we're not thinking about COVID every day. Um, what do you see um, for the EHS market and what are some of the big trends that we should keep an eye on? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, everything we've been talking about today, I think aligns with what we expect to see over the next few years. I mean, we're definitely going to see a consolidation in, in some of these platform approaches, but not only that, uh, I, or in, in some of these point solutions, more towards a platform approach. But not only that, you know, I think one of the things COVID, you know, it's it was it's been a terrible situation in the world, but it's it's highlighted the value of VHS um, in a lot of different ways. Um, it's also kind of highlighted the value of a digitized platform solution or platform approach to EHS because you know a lot of these firms may be those towards the mid market who've never really used a comprehensive EHS solution before recognize that they just couldn't operate you know they weren't able to build you know business resiliency or operational resiliency without those types of tools so we're expecting to see you know all firms recognize the value of EHS software a bit more start maybe taking that first step on their journey um, towards digitizing their EHS um, function, uh, you know, hopefully in gaining all of these benefits to the seam and, and uh, you know, the survey has, has demonstrated. Um, so we're expecting to see that over the next few years. And then just generally a little bit more of a spotlight on the EHS function. Now we have ESG, but we're also seeing, as I mentioned before, really this growing focus on not just looking at your employees as um, you know, the tools to get the job done, but really looking at how you can improve their wellness, how you can increase their happiness, um, make them want to work. And ultimately, a, a big piece of that is making them feel safe and engaged uh, with, within their EHS, work, in the EHS workflows within your organization. So um, how EHS software is going to be a key tool for that uh, is definitely top of mind for a lot of organizations. Thanks very much, Bill. Uh, totally agree. It's a, it's an exciting time to be in the market and uh, um, lots of great things to come. Uh, Asim, do you want to add some last comments as we, we close up the call here today? Sure. Thank you, Trevor. So um, I guess in summary, you know, business applications, once again, coming back to that, it's one of the fastest growing lines of business for Microsoft globally. You know, we're con continuing to invest in the platform and proactively listening to the feedback of our customers and partners alike. So please, you know, keep that feedback coming. Only with that, we can, you know, achieve that next, you know, optimized business application platform may look like, right, for the future. Uh, our partners, you know, uh, that are in the ecosystem, we're continuing to grow that as well. Uh, the partners are super excited about the platform and are continuing to invest and develop new, you know, innovative solutions that allow them to distinguish from other solutions in the marketplace. So thank you again for your ongoing support. Uh, and I'm excited about FI23 head as we step into our new fiscal year, there'll be some ex exciting announcements as well. So stay tuned for those. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, uh, Bill and uh, Asim. Um, you know, really, um, you know, thrilled to have the conversation with you guys and, and, and see this data come out from this research we did earlier in the year. Um, you know, we're a big believer. We have built our company on the basis of, of platforms like the Power Platform or Microsoft and Dataverse and Power Automate and all those good things. Um, and we believe having an EHS data model inside of that, that companies can light up quickly and, and get solutions in play very quickly um, across the organization is, is a really powerful thing. And, and we're glad to see that some of the research, uh, you know, proves out some of the things that we believe to be true. So uh, thanks again. And, and for, uh, for our listeners, we'll just say that um, the full report is available on our website at www.itrack365.com. Um, certainly feel free to download it, get, dig into some of the specifics and uh, uh, reach out and have a conversation about this. We, we think it's a, a game-changing, uh, uh, you know, approach that is happening in the, you know, sea of change that's happening in the market. And uh, we expect it's going to drive a lot of uh, interesting, good things for a lot of customers around the world. So thank you again and everyone have a great day.